The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't watched the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, the mechanisms of groups work in exactly the same way for documents, codes, memos, and networks. I'll demonstrate document groups and smart groups in detail, and you'll be able to use the same processes for codes, memos, and networks. The only difference between a group and a smart group is in how it is constructed. Once constructed, they're used in the same way for the same purposes. Groups are formed by putting members directly into them, whereas smart groups are formed by combining groups you've already formed. The purposes of groups, or smart groups, is to act on all the members at once, or to filter, meaning to see and work on just the members of the group, or a smart group. We'll also look at some of the actions that can be taken on groups and smart groups. I'll cover the actions common to all components in the later video on the project as a whole. Here we'll focus on the actions specific to groups and smart groups. To add or remove members of a group, to combine groups into a smart group, to filter, meaning to focus attention on only the members of the group or smart group, and to interrogate a group or a smart group. Groups and smart groups work in the same way, they just vary in how they're constructed. So let's start with document groups. Here's a dissertation project, and I see there are 32 documents, which I can open up, and I can see that there are four document groups, which I can also open up. I'll start by opening the document manager, and I can see the 32 documents and the four document groups. You can always go to this upper left button and switch on Always on Top, and that will make sure that whatever you're doing elsewhere on the screen, that window will stay open. Coming back to the groups, I see one document here is not yet in a group, and I can easily add it to, say, the Depression group by simply dragging it over the word Depression, and the number goes up from 10 members to 11 members. If you change your mind, you can always remove a document from a group. You can select the group, which serves to filter, in other words, to only see the members of the group. And you can pick the one that you want to remove, perhaps this one, and come back to the group and right-click and remove the document from the group. Before continuing on, I'll remove the filter in order to see all the documents again by just clicking here. Perhaps I want to make a new group. Perhaps I want to think about comparing the females and the males. I can make a group of the female documents. Here's the first one. Fortunately, the student has named the documents in a way that I can easily find the characteristics of each person who was interviewed. I'll just drag it over into the panel, and I'm invited to create a new group, which I'll call female. The group is created, and now I can find the others, and I can select them, and hold the control key down, and just pick all the documents that have Fs, and just drag them into the female group all at once, and now I see there are 16 female documents. For simple group management, to create groups and add and remove members, the side panel works very well. But for more capabilities than just creating a group and adding or removing members, there's also a separate document group manager, which I can open here, or I could have opened directly earlier from the home ribbon right here. But as I have the document manager open, it's easiest to just open the group manager from here. And I will also put it always on top to make sure it doesn't disappear. Here there is a different presentation that lists all the groups. And if you select a group, you can easily see the members on the left and the non-members on the right. And you can add or remove members by simply moving them from left to right. 
I'll double click on this one and it has now moved from left to right. You also have access to other buttons that are just concerned with group management. In particular, this is where you can work with smart groups. A smart group is just like a group in the sense that it has members and in terms of what you do with it, but it is different in how it is formed. Instead of adding members to it directly, as we've been doing with the document groups, it is a combination of other groups. For example, I might decide I want to do some interrogation of the coding for all the patients that have been either characterized as being in the denial group or the depression group. Perhaps there's some similarity between those two that distinguishes them from all the other patients. Rather than create a new group and move all the patients who are in the denial group and all the ones in the depression group into this third group, I can make a combination of the denial and the depression groups. Perhaps I'm going to characterize this as displaying passivity in the face of illness. So I'll create a new smart group. I'll call it passivity. And right now it has no members, no documents are in the smart group. But I'm going to make this smart group a combination of the groups denial and depression. And then all the documents that are in either of those two groups will function as the members of the passivity smart group. One advantage of doing this is that if a new document comes along and I add it to say the depression group, it will automatically become part of the passivity smart group without me having to do anything further. So smart groups are dynamic. To construct the smart group, I go to edit smart group and now I'm going to close the document manager and move this to the side. And now I have a separate window in order to build this smart group. Smart groups are built by connecting groups with operators. The easiest way is to simply form a natural language statement and select the groups and the operators as you go. For example, I want all the documents that are in the denial group, so I'll double click on that, or, so I'll click on the or operator, the documents that are in the depression group. And it automatically builds the smart group visually. This is the simplest possible smart group one can build. Two groups connected with the OR operator. But you see the results down below and that there are 17 members, just what we would expect. Perhaps I would also like to create a smart group of the mail documents. Rather than making a new regular group and picking out all the mail documents and moving it into them, it's a little bit easier to come to the group manager, create a new smart group called the mails, open a new smart group editor on this smart group and start building the smart group. I want this smart group to contain all the documents that are not in the female group. And there I have it. As documents are added or removed from the female group, the male smart group will automatically be updated on the basis of finding all the documents that are not currently in the female group. Having done this construction work, we generally close all these windows and just come back to the regular document manager where we will see all the groups on the side panel or in the explorer where we will see the groups and work with them in that way. This completes part one on forming groups and smart groups. Please watch part two for the actions specific to groups and smart groups.